So, do you remember the Prune Factory people? Do you remember what, what, is, what the people talked about? The guest lecture. What? The guest lecture. Yeah. What? yeah. Oh. Mm. A lot of math. Systems biology. Systems biology. And what, what is systems biology then? In yes. In their description, yeah. Yeah. Basically, networks, models. It's so basically some. S uh, I mean, systems biology is used in many different terms, but in the way they, they define it, it's basically to try to simulate or, or calculate what the process of constructing or making something new or changes in the network. Of, of a, so a classic example why, why you would use it would probably be to increase production of glycose or something like that. So, and uh, it's, so the, 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 and the, I guess one of the key thing was that to, that you get, you, you, every model is a simplification somehow. You're always going to have some simplifications, but because then, then you can just find the right type of simplifications. So you can have really have a um, uh, dynamic model to describe everything as differential equations, but even in that is of course, I mean, particularly for, pro for some type of um, uh, products or cells or else, you have so few numbers, so even the differential equations are good approximation because you would need to actually describe each molecule separately. Because you have basically you can't have 0.5 of a molecule, you have one or zero, and then you have to or in, in a certain state. But uh, normally for the differential equation, describing the concentration of something is quite a good approximation. Uh, and uh, certainly, there was a lot of work on how to optimize these models, how to obtain the data, and how to try to actually describe something. And so you can use it for some kind of predictive purposes. And at least when I talked to Edda, the main thing they do is basically reading literature and trying to guess numbers, which is the largest thing. So you may, you can, but there are of course also, lo also lot of, I mean, there has been a lot of projects trying to describe uh, networks on um, how um, f directly from uh, from data. So you can have, you have an expression of all. If you have some kind of expression of all proteins, all genes, and you just disturb one, and you see whatever goes up or down, whatever change, you can make a network. You disturb one by one, and you can. In this way, you can co connect things to each other. So there's a lot of uh, and of course you know a lot of things. You know a lot of things. You know a lot of. The genes are regulated by transcription factors, so you can basically often you have uh, can do experiments to determine what transcription factors bind in what places, and you can study when they are uh, when they are expressed. Uh, see if I use something else. Anything else is what was interesting? I don't yeah. know if that was in Mandel, but Mandel has um, called up. Yeah, the data was... I, I think it, that was quite specific for the product factor, but I mean, it was an, it's an interesting uh, well, side story a little bit, like that, of course, it has been... I mean, it's very much for prudent production. So what, why, why is it particularly easy to overexpress our and not others? And I think for a long time, people, I mean, the theory of people was for a long time that it actually, I think the bacteria is limited by code also by tRNAs. So you have more of some, if you have five code for a certain amino acid, you have, they are, the number of tRNAs is a limited factor. But it's quite clear that that is not the case. It's uh, at least of the only factor. So there, the, so there are this kind of probably the RNA structure. Somehow, RNA stability in the mRNA is important. So it's it's not the only thing, but it's a big factor. And also that comes from a lot of new data because a lot of data on um, uh, it's called ribosome profiling. So basically, you take a lot of ribosomes, 
and you can check where on the RNA are they. So basically, you, take, you can clear off the RNA from the sequence that, and then you can see that they're stuck in places where it actually seems to be holding up. And it's not really the good news, it's really when you form herpes in RNA, so this is kind of a stop of a stopping of a, uh, the folding. But it kind of makes sense. If you have an RNA herpes and it's going to stop, it kind of be processed by the ribosome. So it's, uh, and that's, I guess, is one uh, rather I mean, people have had this before, but it is a rather new thing. So it's always like these things, it's unclear how relevant it is really for um, in vivo, really for life. You know, it's, it's, if it's one way of regulation or is, is, is how important it is, it probably affects things, but it's not clear what selective pressure there are from it, or really if it's really an important fact or not. I mean, it's a really, uh, it clearly is affected affects translation speed, and, but it's, uh, then the question is how important is translation speed, and, and, and if, it, if that is really what, I mean, most of the regulation comes from other factors come from just gene expression and expressing or not from that, but it might be an important factor at least in some cases. Mm. Let's see else we had. Uh, yeah, if I good now talking about memory proteins. Quite short lecture. So th th that lecture, that lecture was a bit. Um, but we come back to that, or you know, not really remember, but, but the whole idea of secondary structure prediction and going more to structure, I th we will not do it today as a plan, because we we'll do it, because uh, we have a lab that we need to do another lecture first, but I think it's on Wednesday. And uh, so memory process is a bit, is a specific case of secondary structure prediction, because the secondary is, you have a, I think it's a bit of sheets and, and uh, loops, and, and, but the memory process you can't really use normal methods because they are, um, uh, well, they are, the, the environments are different as well. So anything else you remember? How was the labs last week? Did you do more programming? No, no, no. What was the bioinformatics lab? So are the bio bioinformatics labs easier or, or harder than the programming labs? Easier. easier. So they are, so you don't learn anything then? So we just skip them. What? Side last, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did that too, yeah. And when the biophysics lab, actually, they, the last lab, which used to be, I had as an online exam, but uh, I skipped the basic last lab, but then you're going to get one sequence. And then you're going to get a number of questions about that sequence. You're going to get each of you going to get a different sequence. So you're going to write a short answer. How many second? How many hills are predicted? What is the closest homologue in human? Or uh, some questions like that. I, so that that is. I, mean, we, I used to have it as, a, as an online exam, but it was a bit. Hmm, I mean, it was very hard to correct it because basically you're right or wrong, and everything is <laughs> almost right. So it was not to really have an exam, but as I said, this is the last lab. So that's the in two weeks on Friday, first Friday in two weeks. So that so this is really this is kind of practical things which is good to bring with you for the future, in the future. Well, at least you know something. It's not everything, but at least some ideas of things you can do. So h how how many of you are going to what, what are you going to study after this course? You're going to take how many are going to take the biophysics or, or the programming class? Yeah. You? Yeah. Yeah. Scilab lab. Okay. Yeah, I think the Scilab. Students are going to take the yeah. project and from the masters. Memory protein. Somehow we should have them not colliding. I think both can be good options. But um, it's, there are always practical things that we can't control. Because <laughs> uh, that's going to be. I mean, so the, pro the programming is going to be. Sort of a continuation by my whole project of course on this one so it's going to be do your own thing probably a few lectures but or and then unless we become too many we'll try to be a side like it's easy for everyone okay anything else you want to remember or want to tell how much
much should we focus on the guest lectures that we had? Is it important that we understand that for the exam? Or I, I think the key is, I think the, 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 the reading links are put on the web page. They're not that detailed, they're kind of overview. Uh, there's one that is uh, to a paper, which may be a bit difficult, but the, the other part, I think, is more of that level. So it's kind of over the site. It's not going to be, mm. not going to be detailed into uh, exactly how you optimize, uh, what, what is the angle of um, convergence in the differential equation system. It's not going to be that, but it's going to be more of an overview question in that case. Okay. So I mean, to read the material that's on the web, that should be enough. So you think it's okay to have this, I, mean, I was always thinking about if you should have a book or not a book. But so the moment we have this, all these online pages, mainly Wikipedia things, you think it's okay? Or do you, would, you, would you people prefer a book? The problem with the books are that they are, I use two different books. One book is by Arthur Lesk, I used to use. It's very hand wave and it's a bit old. So I don't, think, I don't really like it anymore. The other one is a book called um, Understanding Mathematics of Svelle, Bill, and Baum, which is quite good in some parts. I mean, it's quite good. It covers everything we need, and it actually covers part of the next course also. But it's, uh, it's very deep in some random things that they like. <laughs> and then it's kind of over, uh, missed some other parts. It's, it's, it, it's, it's an okay book, I think. But on the other hand, it costs 800 kroner also. So <laughs> that's, but that's, so if, if people think it's okay to do it this way, I think they will continue to do it next year. No, I mean, the, the Wikipedia pages are very well curated. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're a bit, they're a bit uh, not very deep, but, it's, but, but the, the Arthur Lesk book is not deeper, and the Selville Baum is much deeper in some parts, so they have some parts are extremely deep, but it's kind of, well, probably things that they work on, so <laughs> and the other parts are missing completely, so, it's, so it's, you still would need other things. The Wikipedia pages also have quite less for the reading suggestions. You can always go on, yeah, if you want, yeah, I mean, this is like, there's always more reading if you want to go on. I mean, you could, you could, uh, you could even make these books from Wikipedia, you could combine things together, things like that, but it, it's uh, quite easy for everybody to follow themselves if you want to. So I kind of, I think I'll kind of sort of work. Okay, should we?